Welcome, this is Brenda Harris greeting you in the precious name of Jesus. Thank you so much for stopping by today. I was reading the book of Jonah today and it greatly touched me and I thought I would share the last chapter with you. But remember, God had spoken to Jonah and told him to go preach to that great city Nineveh and tell them to repent or they would be destroyed. Jonah did not want to do this. He hated that city, Nineveh. It was a very wicked place. They did atrocious things. But Jonah ran from the calling of God. And he ended up being cast into the sea. Which I think was a recording of a near-death experience. Because the Bible says he sunk to the bottom of the ocean. And it said Jonah repented it. And he said he cried out to God and God rescued him from Sheol, which means hell. But Jonah decided to go ahead and obey God after that. And so God told that big fish to cough Jonah up because that big fish had come along and, and swallowed him down to his belly and so the big fish obeyed God and Jonah ended up on the shore and he went and preached to that city Nineveh and lo and behold they repented imagine that when they heard the word of God preached they repented so God changed his mind about destroying that nation but I'll read the last chapter of Jonah to you it says but Jonah was greatly displeased and became angry he prayed to the Lord O oh Lord is this not what I said when I was still at home that is why I was so quick to flee to Tarshish I knew that you are a gracious and compassionate God slow to anger and abounding in love a God who relents from sending calamity he wanted those Ninevites to be killed and destroyed. Now, O oh Lord, take away my life, for it is better for me to die than to live. And we need to preach to the lost. No matter how terrible they are, they need to be preached to. They need to hear the word of the Lord so that they won't end up in that horrible place called hell. And... Jonah says, Now, O Lord, take away my life, for it is better for me to die than to live. But the Lord replied, Have you any right to be angry? And it made me kind of chuckle the way God was speaking to Jonah. He's just speaking with him. And just think God could squash Jonah like a bug, but he didn't do it. God loves people even when they have disobeyed him. But thankfully Jonah did repent. But Jonah went out and sat down at a place east of the city. There he made himself a shelter, sat in its shade and waited to see what would happen to the city. Then the Lord God provided a vine and made it grow up over Jonah to give shade for his head to ease his discomfort. And Jonah was very happy about the vine. But at dawn the next day, God provided a worm, which chewed the vine so that it withered. When the sun rose, God provided a scorching east wind, and the sun blazed on Jonah's head so that he grew faint. He wanted to die and said, It would be better for me to die than to live. I mean, this guy keeps saying he wants to die. He had a chance to die earlier when he sunk in that ocean, remember? But I think it's notable that it says that God was in all the proceedings. He said God provided the worm, and that worm chewed that vine. And then God provided a scorching east wind, and the sun blazed on Jonah's head so that he grew faint. Now, why would God provide that scorching east wind 
and it would make Jonah grow faint. I think sometimes God puts people through tests. It's the only thing I can think of. God has a purpose in everything he does. Maybe he wants to teach Jonah a lesson. But God said to Jonah, Do you have a right to be angry about that vine? See how many times God has to say to Jonah, Do you have a right to be angry? And Jonah says, I do. I am angry enough to die. But the Lord said, You have been concerned about this vine, though you did not tend it or make it grow. That was the point. God was going to make a point to Jonah. It sprang up overnight and died overnight. But Nineveh has more than 120,000 people who cannot tell their right hand from their left and many cattle as well. And God says, Should I not be concerned about that great city? So I'm glad that Nineveh repented. And God knew that those people needed his word. And he had a purpose in mind when he told Jonah to go preach. And finally, Jonah obeyed. He had to go through some hardship to get to that point. But he obeyed. And you know, God still works miracles. He still works miracles today. I was listening to this preacher tell about what happened to this young girl. She was molested sexually by her stepfather. And she went and told her mother. And her mother slapped her and told her to shut up. Well, after that, she began wondering if anyone loved her. She began going from boy to boy and she eventually got pregnant. And at that young age, she was in a dire situation. And so she got an apartment of her own and she was working at this place and one night she turned on the TV and she was watching a religious program. She was watching the preacher preach and the Holy Ghost spoke through that minister and he said young lady you don't have to get that abortion she had been planning on getting this abortion and her appointment I believe was for the next day and she felt God's drawing and pulling and she repented of her sin and she gave her heart and life to God she had never prayed before in her life but she accepted the Lord she said a prayer she was praying to the Lord and she said God please help me please help me to know what to do she only had like three dollars left and she went to Denny's restaurant. She decided to splurge because there was this sale going on. You could eat all you could eat for $2.50. So she decided to do that. And she was sitting at her meal and this lady came in there and walked over there to her. And she said, Young lady, I was praying and God spoke to me and said that there was going to be a young lady here this morning and that you were going to get an abortion. And she said, don't get that abortion. In fact, come home with me and I'll provide you a place to stay and to live until 
your baby is born. So God worked a miracle for that young woman. She had just given her heart to the Lord the previous night, 10 hours earlier, and God worked a miracle. God answered her prayer. And she cried out to God, she said, Lord, show me what to do. And he did. But the Lord wants to help people. The Lord wants to save, heal, and deliver people. That's what he does. And he does a great job at it. And I love him, don't you? I appreciate all he does. Remember, God loves you, and so do I. Amen.